Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, April 10th, 2022. Today is Palm Sunday. I am Rev. Mary Tillman, Associate Minister at Pleasant Green, and I will be the presenter of today's lesson. The spring quarter study is God Frees and Redeems. We're in Unit 2, and our theme is Liberating Gospels. This is lesson number two in unit two. The lesson title in the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary is The Passover with the Disciples. Faith Pathway Bible Studies for Adults lesson title is The Unforgettable Leader. Our devotional reading, John chapter 13, verses 1 through 7. The background scripture is Matthew chapter 26, verses 17 through 30, and our print passage is Matthew 26, verses 17 through 30. The key verse is Matthew chapter 26, verse 29, Matthew chapter 26, verse 29, and it says from the NIV Bible, I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to study your holy word. Please open our understanding so that we may learn how to live in humility and harmony and give love to everyone. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Our lesson introduction. This quarter's study uses the lens of liberation and Christian freedom to examine and experience the nature of God who acts to deliver and free people in different situations. This liberation is experienced in the story of the Passover and in the good news of the resurrected Christ. Liberation is experienced in God's new covenant community. We are in Unit 2, as I said before, and it's entitled Liberating Gospels, and these four lessons explore the liberating freedom found in the events beginning with Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, which was last week's lesson, and continuing through his death and resurrection. These lessons are from the Gospel of Matthew. We will, however, include reference scriptures to connect with our lessons printed text. So, get your Sunday school book, your Bible, your pen, and a notepad, and follow along as we go forward with this lesson. What a wonderful lesson. Let's get started. There are three questions I would like for you to consider. Question number one. What directions did Jesus give the disciples in their preparation for the Passover? Question number two. What did Jesus say about the man who would betray him? And question number three. What did Jesus institute during the Passover feast? Let's look at the lesson's biblical context. In last week's lesson... Jesus made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey, symbolizing peace. Jesus' entry ushered him into the final days of his earthly ministry. Leading up to the Passover, the Jewish leaders plotted to kill Jesus. This came as no surprise to Jesus. Throughout his ministry, Jesus encountered determined critics and hostile opponents. The chief priests and the elders took the initiative in conspiring against him as they assembled in the courtyard of the high priest Caiaphas. And we see that in Matthew chapter 26, verse number 3. You and I know as we try to do the work of the church, we've run into some critics and some hostile opponents in our lives. But just as Jesus was not surprised, we should not be surprised. For he said in one scripture, The world hated me so naturally they're going to hate you. Now back to our lesson. Jesus announced to the disciples that the Passover was just two days away and that he would be handed over to be crucified. 
The Passover commemorated the night the Israelites were freed from Egyptian bondage when God passed by the homes marked by the blood of a lamb while killing firstborn sons in unmarked homes. The Passover meal was one day, but the feast continued for seven days. It is one of the oldest of the Jewish feasts. In Matthew chapter 26, verses 6 through 13 in the NIV Bible, we read of the noble actions of a woman anointing Jesus with precious, expensive perfume from her alabaster jar. Her actions stand out as a gesture of faith, love, service, and discipleship. Jesus said when she poured this perfume on his body, she did it in preparation for his burial. In verses 14 through 16, Judas asks the chief priest, what are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? Does that sound like some of the things we've heard people say, what are you willing to give me if I do this for you? Judas's betrayal of Jesus for 30 pieces of silver is the last scene in the text before Matthew moves to today's lesson, the Passover and the significance that Jesus will give to the observance. Following the betrayal, Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his disciples and instituted what is now known as the Lord's Supper. The Missionary Baptist Church incorporated the Lord's Supper as one of the church's ordinances as one of the church's ordinances. There, the other one is water baptism by immersion. So in our Baptist church in Pleasant Green, we have two church ordinances. One is baptism by water, immersion, and the Lord's Supper. And now let's dive into the study of the lesson. This week's lesson's aims are, number one, to understand the last meal Jesus shared with his disciples in light of the Jewish Passover. Number two, affirm the new meaning Jesus gave to the bread and the cup. And number three, rejoice in the freedom that comes through faith in Christ. There are three lesson outlines in the Adult Pathway Sunday School book. I will share two key points from each of these outlines and expound some on each of them. The first outline is the preparing of the Passover, and we find that in Matthew 26, verses 17 through 19. The second outline is the warning of in the Passover, and that is Matthew 26, verses 20 through 24. And the third outline is the blessing after the Passover. And we'll find that in Matthew 26, verses 25 through 30. Outline number one, the preparing of the Passover. And remember, that's Matthew 26, 17 through 19. Key point number one, the disciples prepare for the Passover meal. Verse 17 reads, On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? Verse 18, he replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. Key point number two. Jesus knew that his appointed time was near. This was God's appointed time. It was time for God's great plan for the redemption of man through his son Jesus Christ to come to fruition. Matthew made it clear that the timing of this event was not chosen by Judas or any of the other enemies of Jesus. What would transpire next would happen only because it was Jesus' time. And we see this in verse 19. It reads, So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. This scenario is very similar to the instructions in last week's lesson when Jesus sent two disciples to get the donkey and the colt. The identity of the homeowner here is never stated. The disciples proceeded without delay, for Jesus' word had always proven true. 
This must be the mindset of us as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Every disciple must have a willingness to obey without hesitation. If we serve him without reservation, then we can prepare the way for his glory to be revealed to the world. We should be willing to obey and carry out his instructions as he gives them. We should follow where he leads me. I will follow. Outline number two, the warning in the Passover. And we find that in Matthew 26 through 24. And those verses read thusly. And this is from the new NIV translation. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The man who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Key point number one. Jesus celebrates the Passover with his disciples. In Matthew's narrative, it is the traditional Passover meal held on the Thursday evening before the crucifixion on Friday. There was a blessing over the festival and the wine, followed by the drinking of the first cup. Actually, there are four cups during the Passover meal. The food was then served consisting of unleavened bread, bitter herbs, greens, stewed fruit, and roasted lamb. The meal was eaten in Jerusalem, which was a Passover requirement. That's why thousands and thousands of people came from, of Jews came from all over to assemble in Jerusalem for the feast. Jesus and his disciples spent the night in the area of Jerusalem known as Gethsemane, which is also a further requirement in observance of the Passover. Key point number two. Jesus pointed out to Judas the consequences of his betrayal. As they were eating, Jesus shocked the twelve with the revelation that one of them would betray him. And we see that in verse 22. The disciples were shocked and with great stress and sorrow, they began questioning among themselves. And one by one, they asked, Lord, is it I? Although this statement was directed to Judas, it caused all of the disciples to do a self-examination. At some point in our lives, we too must do a self-examination to see if we have betrayed our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Have we always represented him in our everyday living? Have we denied ever knowing him in certain circumstances? How about this one? Have we ever looked the other way when things were going wrong and failed to speak up or make corrections? As tragic as it is, my brothers and sisters, I think it's probably safe to say that we are guilty of some form of betrayal of Christ. We may not have sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, but we made a choice that was not Christ-like somewhere in a moment of weakness. Let us examine ourselves. As Jesus sat with his disciples that dreadful night in the midst of the one who would betray him, he remained calm and in control. He was unmoved. He knew what was coming. The bitterness of being betrayed by one he himself handpicked to be one of his disciples, one of his closest followers, the treasurer of the twelve disciples, one who had sung and prayed with him. This person was going to betray him, but Jesus continued to show him that agape love because he knew his purpose had to be fulfilled for our salvation. Although Judas concealed his plan from his fellow disciples, Jesus knew what Judas did, and he said in verse 24, The Son of Man will go as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. And this he referred to Judas. Outline number three, the blessing after the Passover. 
And we find that in Matthew 26, verses 25 through 30. Verse 25 says, Then Judas, the one who betrayed him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. At this point, I'm going to have to jump to the book of St. John for my Bible scholars, for my listeners for this, for this lesson. Let's jump to St. John chapter 13, verses 21 through 30. And it reads from the New Living Translation as follows. Now Jesus was deeply troubled, and he exclaimed, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at each other, wondering whom he could mean. The disciple Jesus loved was sitting next to Jesus at the table, and we know that was John. Simon Peter motioned to him to ask, Who is he talking about? So that disciple, John, leaned over to Jesus and asked, Lord, who is it? Jesus responded, It is the one to whom I give the bread I dip in the bowl. And when he had dipped it, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. When Judas had eaten the bread, Satan entered into him. Then Jesus told him, Hurry and do what you're going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant. Since Judas was their treasurer, some thought Jesus was telling him to go and pay for the food or to go and give some money to the poor. So Judas left at once, going out into the night. Now let's get back to the lesson, key point number two. Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper, verses 26 through 30. And it reads like this. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Verse 30, And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The first thing that needs to be said about Jesus' reinterpretation of the elements of the Passover is that he did not interpret the lamb itself or the bitter herbs. Rather, he focused on the bread and the wine. Jesus blessed the bread, broke it, and passed it around, commanding them to eat it because it represents his body, a symbol of a greater connection, relationship, and even partnership with Jesus. Likewise, Jesus took the cup, blessed it, and told them to drink from it because it represents the blood he would shed on the cross for the remission of sins of mankind. In verses 26 and 28, Jesus made a personal declaration using the phrases, this is my body and this is my blood, rather than this will be my body and this will be my blood. This is my body and this is my blood. Blood indicates Jesus' eternal existence. As he has said before Abraham was, I am. And we find that quote in John chapter 8 verse 58. Before Abraham was, I am. Jesus declared that he will not drink with them again until they all are gathered in the Father's kingdom. They left singing a hymn headed, to the Mount of Olives. In summary, this lesson is about Jesus and the last Passover meal taking on a new significance only because of him. He saw his death as the act that instituted or ratified the new covenant. Therefore, this meal as it foreshadowed the end time banquet was actually about instituting a new covenant relationship between God and God's people. 
This Passover meal takes on great significance because it was the last supper Jesus had with his disciples. This is the meal where Jesus reinterpreted the significance of the Passover and the sacrificial lamb. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice and paid the ultimate price with his life for the sins of the whole world. He died and he rose for you and for me. Because of what Jesus did on Calvary, you and I have the plan of salvation. All was paid at Calvary. Jesus paid it all. No greater love has no man than this, that a man will lay down his life for a friend. God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. And the son gave his life so that we may be free. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. The price, my brothers and sisters, have, has been paid. All we have to do is confess with our mouths and believe in our heart that Jesus is God's son and that he raised him from the dead to be saved. But there's more to the plan of salvation. I want you to know we've got to love one another in spite of those that hate us. We know we have haters, but uh, just like Jesus loved Judas anyway and treated him with kindness, we have to do the same thing. Just remember, Jesus paid it all, all to him we owe. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise today because you suffered and died so that we might have a right to everlasting life. We look forward to the day when we shall eat and drink anew with you in the Father's kingdom. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Have a wonderful day.